Hello everyone, welcome to the newest edition of Wisconsin Johnson Outdoors. The boys and I just went and picked up this boat. We're going to go through it and take a look, so stay tuned. Alright, so some people collect things. Bobbleheads, spoons, decoys, uh, you name it. Uh, I have a tendency to collect boats. Uh, it's a problem I've had for quite a while. Uh, I don't know exactly why I have it, uh, but if you're a true duck hunter, you probably have at least three or four different kinds of boats. Um, it's an affliction. It's a problem. I know it, but I just can't help myself. So here's one of the boats that I have. This is a Stealth 1200. Uh, it's had some work done to it, but it still gets the job done. Over here I have a 14 foot boat that I use pretty much only when I go to Minnesota. Uh, underneath the tarp here, I've got a canoe and a John boat. That John boat's one of the John boats that we put the blind on. Buried for the winter is my fishing boat. I also have one John boat out at the marsh and then my buddies and I have that tender boat that we use for diver hunting on Green Bay and then two layout boats uh, that go along with that. So as you can see, I have too many boats. Although I don't know if you can really have too many boats. And that brings us to this bad guy. Uh, I've been looking for a 16 foot boat that I could just use for duck hunting for quite some time now. Um, after going to Minnesota this fall and hunting out of my brother's 16 foot boat with the blind on it, I really thought that that was a nice way to go. Uh, especially with the boys growing up now, uh, it'll be nice to have enough room for the two of them, the dogs, the decoys, probably another hunting buddy. I'm not exactly sure what the plan is going to be with this boat. Um, and we're probably not going to do much with it right now. We might work on it a little bit over the winter. Let's take a walk around it and see what we have. One of the first things I noticed when I saw the boat was this nice shoreline trailer underneath it. Uh, it's pretty heavy duty. It's probably more heavy duty than it needs to be for the boat. But once you get everything on there, a good sturdy trailer is never a problem. Uh, the tires are a little bit weather checked, so those will probably have to be replaced. Obviously, we'll have to go through the bearings. It looks like we'll end up having to go through the wiring. Uh, it's broken there, and then back here, it's also broken. Um, the lights look like they're in good shape. I don't know if the bulbs work or not but we'll see once we get the wiring harness all fixed up. Here's the other tire, and as you can see, this one is all weather checked as well. So those will definitely need to come off and be replaced eventually. The rollers look like they're in pretty good shape. So I don't think we'll have to mess around with those too much. It's always nice to have a roller trailer for a duck boat because if you can't get your trailer all the way down into some of those launches, it's kind of nice to be able to just get it close and roll it off and then roll it back on when you're done. The guy I bought the boat from said that there is no wood anywhere in this boat. Uh, the flooring here is aluminum. Um, so that might be a little slippery, so we may have to do something about that. Moving around to the back of the boat, there is a bilge pump in here. No idea if it works. Looks like there's also a pump for a live well. Uh, this folds up. There's your backup paddle. Uh, it's got a battery box in there and then a control panel. Uh, the guy said that one of these two silver switches here runs that light bar that's up front. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, here is a live well. Um, I don't really need that for duck hunting, so maybe we'll turn that into a dead well. Be a good spot to store the ducks, or maybe we'll yank it out completely, who knows. These bars back here, he said they added those because they had a mud motor on here. Uh, first they had a long tail motor, and then they put a surface drive motor on here. So they put these brackets in here just to make it a little bit more sturdy. They also put some pretty thick pieces of aluminum in here too. All right, up front here, they have a little storage compartment, so that'll be nice to be able to throw some things in there. Uh, and then here is the light bar. Don't know a lot about light bars, never have had one on a boat. Um, but if it works, I'll probably just leave it on there. Um, I've seen guys that use those and they seem to light up pretty good. 
And over on that side, looks like he's got some rod holders. Uh, those will come out for sure. Uh, maybe we'll put some over there to store guns and things in. Uh, the basic idea though is I want to leave this as open as I can. Um, I always find that with duck boats, the more open space you have, the better. As a part of the plan, we will put a beaver tail blind on this. Uh, but for now, we're going to just store it away for the winter. Uh, if I happen to have a chance to get it into my buddy Dan's shop, we might do that and just go through it and see what we've got. But it's probably going to be more of a springtime, summertime activity. I got it now though because it was the right price. Uh, the boat and the trailer, 400 bucks. So I can't complain too much about that. All right, well that does it with the walk around and that does it for this edition of Wisconsin Johnson Outdoors. As always, thanks for watching, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Okay, now where do I put it so the wife doesn't see it? Uh, oh boy. Okay, I hid it behind these sticks. I don't think she'll ever see it. Shh.